Good evening, California FFA. Our names are Shelby, Tawny, and Courtney. And we are Samuel's older sisters. We have had the joy of watching Sam grow up and become the man he is today. Being the youngest of four and the only boy, Sam has had some interesting times, but he has always been a good sport. Sam never complained, even if we dressed him up or outvoted him for chick flicks. Ladies, he has a great taste for chick flicks now. He has always been there for us as a shoulder to cry on, a friend to talk to, and someone who would crack jokes just to make us smile. Being that my brother and I are so close in age, we have always been very close. It's crazy to think that five years ago, he was a little freshman, not sure if he wanted to join FFA like I did. But it was definitely the best decision he has ever made. Sam has a big heart for every one of you in this organization, and especially his family. Even though Sam had just got off the road from visiting some FFA chapters, he drove four hours at 10 o'clock at night to be there for the birth of his first nephew and my son. Nixon is so lucky to have you as an uncle. Growing up, I always wanted a little brother. I never imagined that I would get one as great as Sam. I have seen him go through many phases in life. At one point, he was so into skateboarding, his dream was to be a professional skateboarder. Then he got into playing the guitar, but nothing seemed to fit right. It wasn't until he got involved in the FFA that everything started to plan out right. Since being involved in FFA, Sam has grown as a person and a leader. He has become the amazing young man that he is today, and I'm proud to be his older sister. I remember when we first moved to Apple Valley. Sam was about four. There was nothing but dirt, and Sam was convinced that our parents had just moved us to Afghanistan. <laughs> Who would have thought that moving to such a small town would bring such a huge opportunity for him? Sam has always put his whole heart into everything that he's done. I have always admired his compassion for others, his ability to make everyone laugh, and most importantly, his passion for life. He may be the baby of our family, but he truly is the person that inspires all of us to reach for our full potential, and he is also the person that brings us all together. Sam, you may be retiring today, but we know that this is only the beginning because your passion and commitment will lead you to do even greater things, touch more lives, and ultimately become an agent of change in this world. As a family, we are so proud of you, and we cannot wait to see where your passion takes you next. California FFA, please welcome our brother, your California State FFA treasurer, Samuel Luper, with his speech entitled, The Hidden Message. What would you say if I told you that psychologists have found a substantial correlation between reduced stress, better heart health, lowered anxiety, lower pain perception, and most importantly, higher overall happiness, all attributed to your ability to be a forgiving person. As usual, we brought in a selection of subjects, gave them all a test that gave us a fairly good idea at their current level of happiness. And as usual, they had no idea what we were doing. We started by asking them to close their eyes and picture somebody that they were currently holding a grudge against or had some sort of unresolved conflict with. Okay. You got that person in mind? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then we asked them to write out who this person was, what the event was that caused this tension between them, how they felt about it, and then most importantly, we asked them to, in their own words and in their own way, Oh, there's one more, there's one more bit to this. Would you be willing to do it into a mirror? It was the middle of my senior year of high school. I was just heading back for my final semester. The semester where I thought my life would start coming together. I should start hearing from colleges soon. I was getting ready to run for state office and scholarships were coming in. And I was excited about what the future had in store for me. However, a few days went by and I received some news that drastically changed my perspective on life. I had received some news that my family was going through a rough patch. And I learned 
that this would be a time where I would be tested on how strong I could be as an individual and how strong we could stick together as a family. When I first got the news, I immediately felt broken. I felt broken as an individual. We felt broken as a family. I felt like I didn't know who I could trust anymore. For the next few weeks, I struggled to talk to anyone around me. I struggled to sleep at night. I began questioning my beliefs and my abilities, my abilities to run for state office. I really began questioning everything in my life. Just as we saw the individuals in that video struggling to forgive, I was put in a position in my life where I had to confront forgiveness. Forgiveness. What is forgiveness? According to the dictionary, forgiveness is when you stop feeling anger or resentment towards someone else or yourself for a flaw, an offense, or a mistake. It's pretty easy to understand that definition of forgiveness, but it becomes extremely difficult to implement forgiveness in our everyday lives. However, it's when we learn how to forgive that the past can begin to heal and we can focus on how we can give to those around us. Now, I don't think I truly began to understand forgiveness until almost two months after this situation occurred in my life. I was in the Riverside section at the Hammett FFA chapter. And there, I was working with some local ag teachers and my regional supervisors. I was preparing there to run for state office later that month. While we were there, we were practicing everything that could happen to me in the process. Going through stakeholder rounds, round robins, team rounds. And I was feeling really good about my performance until we moved into the personal round. I sat directly in the center of this room. I had a panel of ag teachers all around me. And that's when Ms. Baker, an agricultural educator from the Hammond FFA chapter, began asking me questions. She asked, Sam, tell me about a time in your life where your values, where something happened and your values were questioned and they didn't align. And how did you overcome it as a leader? As I sat there for a few moments, thinking of an answer, nothing came to mind. She noticed that I was struggling and decided to move to the next question. She then asked, Sam, what can you give to the members of California FFA? As I sat there pondering those two questions in my mind, I could do nothing but look up with tears flooding my eyes. I began to explain to them that I had no clue an answer to either of those questions because I was struggling to answer those questions in my everyday life. You see, I was put in a position where something did not allow, align with my values and I was questioning my abilities and what I could give to the members of California FFA. As I began talking to the ag teachers about what was going on at home, it was within that moment that I began to understand what real forgiveness is. Now each of us might believe in a different theory behind forgiveness. 
Some of us might believe that forgiveness is excusing them for what they've done and justifying it to us. Some of us might believe in the method of forgiving, forgetting, and trying to move on. But from my experiences, neither one of these methods truly work. To find real forgiveness in our lives, we must go through a process. Now, this process isn't something that's just easy and works overnight, especially not when that person plays a major role in your life or if the issue is big enough. The process starts by being able to name that offense and that hurt and then consciously releasing that anger and that resentment that you're holding against that person. And then it takes a conscious effort to begin healing that relationship. You see, forgiveness doesn't equal forgetfulness. And that pain's not just gonna immediately go away. But that healing process to that relationship can start. Now, how might that healing of that relationship work? Maybe we have to journal out the pain and be able to say it out loud, like I did. Maybe after that we give them a phone call and try to talk through what had happened. Send them a text or to go get coffee. You see, that part of the process can be different for every single one of us. And Paul Boyce says it best, that forgiveness doesn't change the past, but it, enlarge, but it gives us and enlarges us our opportunities in the future. You see, as young leaders, we have our entire lives right in front of us. And we have a choice to make. We have a choice to hold on to that anger and that resentment in our life. Or we have a choice to release that and begin healing those relationships. Because it's only when we can begin to learn how to forgive that we can focus on those people around us and we can focus on how to give and move into a brighter future. Now, now, if we were to examine that word forgiveness, we can see an almost hidden message within the word. The root of the word forgive is to give. And this last year, I've been able to see some incredible ways that members are giving across this state. And one of the coolest experiences was when Amanda and I were on our second chapter visit of the year. We were traveling to the Lower Lakes FFA chapter in the North Coast region. While we were there at the chapter, the night before, we met up with the chapter officers and had dinner. And I sat next to a student named Cody. Cody was telling me all about how he got to show his first lamb at county fair and sell it. As Cody was on my mind the next day at the chapter visit, I learned just a little bit more about Cody's story. I learned that Cody's life was nothing easy. Cody lived on the couch of a friend's house because he didn't really have any family. When Cody was able to sell his lamb for the first time at county fair, he made a substantial amount of money. And with this money, he could have done a lot for himself. But instead, Cody decided that he wanted to buy FFA jackets for the members in his chapter that couldn't afford them. You see, 
Cody just wasn't feeling generous one day and wanted to buy random gifts for people at his school. No. Cody wanted to buy a special gift for his friends and his life that have become part of his family. Cody exemplifies what it means to be able to forgive and how we can focus on giving once we're able to do so. You see, we don't forgive because we want to forget and move on. We forgive so that we can begin to heal inside. We forgive so that we can begin to give to others around us. Now, I know it's not easy to think of those bad memories in your life, to relive that past that you strive each and every day to forget. But it's when we're able to confront those emotions and those feelings against that person that the healing process can begin to take place. California FA, I want you to think of someone in your life. Someone that you need to forgive. I want you to think of the joys it can bring back to your life and the opportunities that it can open. Now I know if I wouldn't have forgiven the people in my life my senior year, I wouldn't have been able to take hold of the opportunities on this stage. I wouldn't have been able to focus this last year on giving to the members of California FFA because I would still be stuck on the hurt from the past. To my advisors and my mentors, thank you for constantly reminding me of the power of forgiveness and for always being there for me, no matter what was happening in my life. Thank you for always being a shoulder to cry on when I needed it, or a good laugh. I love you. <laughs> to the Mayfield family, thank you for being a solid foundation for us this year. And thank you for only ever being a phone call away whenever we needed anything in our life. Thank you for exemplifying what it means to have family values. And thank you for being a role model to me this year. And thank you for forgiving me for breaking all those things on the first day I walked into your house. <laughs> I'll fix your toilet one day. Oh, to my team, thank you for constantly giving yourself to the members of California FFA and for giving me for my flaws or my practical jokes along the way. Andrew, thank you for using your strength of focus to focus on the members this year and make sure that they got the best experience possible. Lauren, thank you for showing me the power of listening as you listen to the thousands of members as they shared their stories with you. Amanda, thank you for showing me your strength as a leader. And thank you for never taking no as an answer, no matter what obstacles were ever in your way. Connor, thank you for always being a good laugh when I needed it, or someone to talk to. And thank you for reminding us that this organization was founded on agriculture and how we can stay true to the industry. Jace, thank you for being that level-headed leader of our team. Thank you for constantly seeking out 
everyone's opinion and listening. California FFA has truly been lucky to have someone like you to look up to this year. To my family, thank you for constantly staying strong and by my side, helping me always achieve my goals and never settle for less. I love you. California FFA, let's leave this arena today. Let's focus on those relationships that we need to fix within our life. Focus on those people that we need to forgive and those relationships that we need to heal. Let's focus on how we can start giving back to those people around us. California FFA, it's up to you to start the process. Some forgiveness 
is all for you in my pursuit of happiness. I got a homesick heart, but a long ways left to go. I've been doing my part, but I ain't got much to show. So I'm asking you to show me some forgiveness. It's all for you in my pursuit of happiness. Chasing that life moving on cause I had to prove. There ain't no life worth doing what I did to you. So I'm asking you to show me some forgiveness. It's all for you in my pursuit of happiness. I got dreams that keep me up in the dead of night Telling me I wasn't made for the simple life There's a light I see but it's far in the distance I'm asking you to show me some forgiveness It's all for you in my pursuit I've been working all night, hoping you can help me to believe This song ain't nothing if a song can't set you free So I'm asking you to show me some forgiveness It's all for you in my pursuit of happiness I got dreams that keep me up in the dead of night Telling me I wasn't made for the simple life Far in the distance I'm asking you to show me some forgiveness It's all for you in my pursuit of happiness Singing oh happiness Singing oh happiness Sometimes you leave who want your love If it's love they won't give up They know a war Raging, you gotta choose. These days are tough, these days are long. Sometimes it's hard to carry on, but I hear a voice singing. I know it's true. I got dreams to keep me up in the dead of night, telling me I wasn't made for the simple life. There's a lot I see, but it's far in the distance. I'm asking you to show. Samuel, Sam and Jamma, Sam and Jay, Uncle Sam. The next plus size Abercrombie and Fitch model. <laughs> Champ, Sam. You have never failed to put a smile on our faces, make us laugh, or barbecue dinner. Thank you for ripping pants tear sheets, and farts. <laughs> we hope never to get caught for that armed robbery, and we always find the dancing cookie. We appreciate your ability to have gone through almost as many jackets as we've gone through vehicles this year. Nevertheless, you have made each and every day of this year something special. Your love for Betty White is almost as much as your love for the members. You have the ability to connect with students and build and bring positive energy wherever you go. Thank you for always going to Walmart and sharing your love for impulse buys with us. For example, onesies, Nerf guns, and lots of ice cream. We never forget the most special day we spent with you, filming the GLC video. <laughs> we know you're all about traditions and making sure we never skip a meal. Sam, this year, we wouldn't have been able to be us without you. Thank you for always checking in and making sure we were okay. We wish you the best of luck in the next chapter of your life. A children's storybook writer for Barnes & Nobles. With love, 
Andrew, Lauren, Amanda, Connor, and Jace. And PS, uh, PPT stands for PowerPoint. time. You're 2016. 2017 treasurer, Mr. Samuel Looper. <laughs> <laughs>